Now then, what's going on everyone? Hope you're all having a good day. It's time to talk about David De Gea again. Um, I think it's it's getting to the sort of crunch time with what's going to happen with Manchester United and what's going to happen with David De Gea. And I think that you're looking now at one of the biggest decisions of Ten Hag's reign, as in what to do with the goalkeeper situation. Now, the way it works at the moment, the way it is kind of stretching out is you've got Diogo Costa coming off a couple of world-class performances, including uh, one last night in the Champions League where he saved two penalties, which is his fifth penalty save this year. He saved more penalties against Pl Club Bruges last night than De Gea has saved in his entire European career. Hmm. Laurie Whitwell said that United are currently searching the market for goalkeepers who match Ten Hag's system and playing style. And the Athletic are also saying that Diogo Costa is being watched by Manchester United staff and Athletic Bill Bowes, Unai Simon, is also on United's list. Now, United are apparently willing to renegotiate with De Gea and renew his contract, but they're looking to offer him a lot lower terms. Um... Now, De Gea, as you know, is pretty much the best paid goalkeeper in the world because he was given a contract in the roaring Woodward times where everybody got a fat deal, including the likes of Phil Jones. So there's a massive issue that you've got where these inflated wages, and, and there's half a chance that Sancho's on that sort of ride as well. But you've got David De Gea, the world's number one goalkeeper when it comes to pay packet, but not the world's number one goalkeeper when it comes to ability. And I wonder if there's a bit of a Game of Thrones move on from United here. So United get to say, hey, we offered David a new deal. He didn't want it. But the truth of the matter might actually be we offered him a deal where it was going to half his wages. Now, as much as we'd all like to think, well, if you like playing for United and you're, you're going to get paid what you earn, halving your wages isn't too bad. I mean, are you going to have enough money for the rent? It's still probably going to be like 200, 250 grand a week. Stop being greedy. But footballers' egos and probably agents won't ac accept them guys, you know, almost half in their wages. So I wonder, is this a little bit of a sneaky move from United where we go, yeah, we'll offer you a new deal on this much. What? What's that? You don't want it? No problem. We'll go and sign this kid instead. Um, and I, I think that might be what United are doing here in terms of we'll either get De Gea to reduce his wage and in which case we'll keep him because this season he's actually looked a lot better than I thought um, he could be. We've got Martin in the comments that says De Gea is far better than Costa. I I'm going to have to totally disagree on that one. I think Costa's already better than him. Um, not by a lot, but I think he is better than him. I think he's more well-rounded when it comes to playing out and stuff. Um, but I think that you, you, with Costa, you're looking at a keeper that could legitimately be number one goalkeeper in the world in a few years. Um, and I don't think you're going to be saying that about David De Gea. So I think if United did offer him a reduced contract and he takes it, I think they'd probably be all right with that. I don't think there'd be a massive... Listen, he's not so bad that he's costing us games currently. But by the same rule, there's an opportunity there to go and get one of the best young goalkeepers in the world. So I think it'd be really interesting to see how this one plays out. And I think from, from the outside looking in, I think this is the correct way United go about it. You can't really just treat De Gea like shit. The guy's given a lot of service to the club in, in some of the leanest times we've had. I, I think it's fair to him to, to sit down and be adult with him and say, listen, mate, we're going to offer you a new deal because we like and respect what you've done, but it's going to have to be in line with where we see you in terms of ability. And that would be a reduction because the wages is on make no sense. Um, and then obviously you'd have Ronaldo's wage coming off in the summer as well. And then United start to look like a club that's actually fucking run correctly. Um, there's only a couple more players that are on ludicrous wage. Uh, and that's that, really. So, um, in terms of Costa versus... And obviously, there's Unai Simons in the mixer here, by all accounts. In terms of Costa and um, De Gea, if I just go head-to-head -head with them, because I really like Costa, Costa would be my choice. 
He's got a higher level of distribution. He's a lot more comfortable on the ball. He is a good shot stopper. He's fucking massive. Um, he is conf confident when sweeping up out the back. He's young with room to develop. And 52.4 million pound release clause. That's a very good price for, like I said, someone that I believe will be um, one of the best goalkeepers in world football. Almost within a couple of years, I would say. Within a couple of years. Um, so yeah, that's that. In elsewhere, I mean, I was debating doing a video on this, um, but Barcelona, Barcelona have crashed into Europa League. Oh boy! Now Manchester United are in a lot of debt, and we've been in a lot of debt for fifteen, seventeen years because of our piss poor ownership. Barcelona were meant to be the beacon of how to do things. A fan-owned club didn't have a sponsor on their shirts. And when they decided to have a sponsor on their shirts, it was donated as UNICEF. And I think they actually donated the, what they'd get in a sponsor fee to UNICEF. And how they've gone from being that and a club that relies on La Masia to being a club that is now a billion in debt that sells off anything that isn't fucking nailed down and even some stuff that was nailed down. And they find themselves in Europa League. Players didn't want to leave them because of the Champions League. The fact that they've crashed out in an easiest group. How must De Jong, a penny for Frankie de Jong's thoughts at the moment? Barcelona is very much a sinking ship. They sold off tons of assets on the basis that they'd be doing X, Y, and Z. And they ain't doing X, Y, and Z. They're crumbling. What happened to Barcelona? What happened? Paul, uh, Paul John in the comments says, how much do I think Costa will cost? Won't cost a lot. A little pun there for you. 52.4 million, he's got a release clause, so we know that we can get it. Good morning from Kansas, says Ryan Mitchell. Ryan, I've got a question. Why is Arkansas... And Kansas, spelt the way they are and pronounced the way they are. Explain that to me. IR says, I don't like the 100% fan ownership model. Interesting. <laughs> Especially considering your audience. Um, club presidents will run the club into the ground and leave it as somebody else's mess to clear out. Not entirely. Barcelona, that's true. That's not necessarily the truth elsewhere. Uh, Yoa says De Jong never wanted United uh, don't want him stay um, well it looks like he did never want United did it but that's the interesting one um, Peter Kelly says they had a difficult enough group Bayern and Inter are no mugs but winning at the new Camp uh, not winning at the new Camp versus Inter is bad um, blame the French what am I blaming the French for um, Don Carlo says Rashford, Bruno, Shaw, Maguire, Wambasaka, Alanga, Fred McTominay should all be binned off before De Gea. It's a little bit excitable, that I think, mate. Survivor Red said Messi happened, fees and wages become unstably inflated. Um, IR says different for Paddock and Barcelona. I'm also a founder member. Yes, you can't say that then, can you? Um, United says, let's steal all their players in the summer for peanuts. I hope so. Hussey says the Super League is coming back. You better believe it's coming back. I mean, did everybody see the video from the Giza last week? Um, basically just outlining, uh, to be honest, it was a load of old guff that he was saying. Oh, blame the French for Arkansas and Kansas. Oh, is that the case, is it? Right, got you. Um, Notch says, was the Champions League the only reason De Jong didn't want to move? I, I actually think it was probably the thing that was used as the excuse, despite not actually being the full excuse. I believe it was down to the fact that if he left, he was never going to see that 17 million again. Now, I don't know if he's going to see it anyway, but if he left, that contract was then dissolved and there would be no recourse for him to get that back. So I think it's probably something to do with that. Um... Malp says, uh, Frankie's missus loves the Barca sunshine. Yeah, yeah I mean, you, you trace this all the way back. I believe, and I could be misinformed on this, but in my base understanding of what's gone on, Barcelona began to unravel in the year, was it 2001 or 2000 when Figo moved from Barcelona to Real Madrid? 
that was the moment at which the release clauses that Barcelona had in place were relatively sane sort of uh, release clauses. Because it, like, it's La Liga rules that every single player has to have a buyout clause in their contract, but Barcelona seem to be mental. Like, remember when Messi's got to a billion and their players have got these absolutely bonkers release clauses? I believe the reason for that started with Figo going to Real Madrid. I believe that was the catalyst for Barcelona's unravelling. Now, they kept it together for seven or eight years um, into the Guardiola kind of era, and they were still at least putting up the front that they were a well-run club. I mean, I'm going to have to look into the finances to see when it went bananas. But from what I, little bits that I've read on it, that it was the Figo transfer when they shit themselves and then started putting everybody on these crazy release clauses. And you say, well, what does the release clause have to do with, with anything? Well, actually, a lot. Because once those release clauses were in place, the players then felt like they could ask for larger sums. Well, you think I'm worth a billion? This is what you put in my release clause. I need to be paid a lot more than what you're paying me at the moment. And then you have people like Lionel Messi, who probably was worth whatever he was getting paid. But the problem is you can't have players that are sharing a pitch of him being on 2% of what he's on. So when he's on two and a half million pound a week, anyone can walk in there and go, am I worth a tenth of another player? Am I, am I worth a fifth of another player? And before you know it, you have the likes of Griezmann on 800 grand a week. And they also had some crazy transfers. I mean, Dembele looks like he's playing well at the moment, but Jesus, it's took him how long? Um, Uwa says, Fabrizio, the situation for Cody Gakpo has completely changed. Top important clubs in England and Europe are now sending their scouts to follow him. United are still keeping an eye on him. That's interesting. Um, what other questions have we got in the mixer here? Uh, Leander says, I hope so, because if we can replace Ronaldo and De Gea, it's a massive step in the right direction. Um, De Jong was on 350. No, I think... Um, I don't think he was, you know. I think he was on a lot more than that. Was that not his deferred? Shit. I just dropped a drink over. <laughs> Get me calculator out to see here. It was 18 mil a year, wasn't it? Yeah, 350 actually, yeah. So that was about right. Mankey says, speaking of fan ownership, how far are we from the app being released? I haven't spoken to the app guy in a couple of weeks, so I don't know. It seemed like it was extremely close. We just needed the payments uh, connecting. Uh, I, am, I am trying to have an update this week as a newsletter that goes out explaining all sorts of stuff. So um, everyone that's a member of Stratford Paddock, you will get that update this week in terms of what's going on. Um, and hopefully some news about some other stuff that's been in the pipeline that we've been working on as well. Um, and if I can just throw it out there, if anybody knows any web type people, web designers... Because we've had some money stolen off us. Uh, designers just fucking stolen some des web design money from us and changed their email stuff so we're no longer even able to communicate with them. So we've lost a little bit of money on that. So we are now desperately in need of someone that can help us build a website. Something that can scrape Google Sheets for stats and data and stuff. Um, Notch says, given how much money the club has, the fact that we still face player power problems so much is crazy. Not necessarily, because recruitment is the number one thing, isn't it? And players are still such an, a massive, important part of any sort of team. Um, I don't know how you're ever going to completely eradicate player power unless it's unless you get into the, the mega manager sort of thing. Mega managers that are backed by clubs above all else, then you've got a chance. Um, if any, so there's a couple of people in the comments here talking it, contracts and things like that yeah we had a contract but now the guy's uncontactable uh, so I don't know what the fuck we're going to do um, Zeon says I'm a software engineer 
it's a ideally we need a wordpress website something like we said can scrape data from uh google sheets there's apis that you can use from that sort of stuff uh people's champ says director of football in before making more transfers that's an interesting if you are someone that can do website stuff either dm me through instagram or message deji through the email that's on all my socials and get in touch um yeah a director of football coming in would be massive i think um if it's the right person like we said you know you, you've got mitchell i'd be very excited about uh michael edwards is another one that I, i'm kind of all about as well so that's the one um joseph says do i think we can win europa kind of scared with the clubs relegated from the champions league um well they've been relegated out of champions league for a reason um so I'm not necessarily completely scared, but gambling on a cup competition's not the greatest idea anyway. I think United have got to focus on being good in the league. And if we can be good in the league, you'll qualify for the Champions League. It is, it is a straightforward thing for this United team, I think, to finish inside the top four. We can get above people. I, I think winning the Europa League... You know, gambling that you've got the right players available and fit for just those two matches or even coming down to one of those matches. Um, I think that that's harder than it is to be consistent over a longer period of time. That's what I think. And Malik says, we need to get Endrick. A kid looks like an unbelievable talent. I told you in that video, this would be the last time that you've never heard of him. And now you're starting to see him everywhere, aren't you? Uh, United says Newcastle are going to be scary in a couple of years. Um, not sure we'll ever get back to the top with our owners. I think we will. Brian Casey says league is bread and butter. Needs to be priority. Yes, I agree with that. Um, <laughs> Vabnav says, first things first, Rio Keenan Skulls need to keep their mouth shut. Um, I guess they fear this team gets successful, then they'll lose their idol status. I don't think that's the uh, the truth, to be honest, at all. I, I, I know there's a lot of people defending Ronaldo. I'm actually surprised at Roy Keane more than anyone, the way he's defending Ronaldo. Um, but that's that one. Alex says, I wanted to ask, with Champions League relegated teams dropping into the Europa League, should they make European comps like they were before the European Cup was called the Champions League? What, as in make more European competitions? Is that what you're saying? John says, we have more chance of being bitten by a daffodil than winning the Europa. Uh, Mark says, we will get back to the top. Um, yeah, I think we can get back to the top. I do think we can get back to the top. I absolutely do. But, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time. Yoa says, Glazer's spokesman said last weekend that United are happy with Murta, so we aren't getting rid. It might be a different role. Um, Brian says, how many Newcastle players are going to the World Cup? They could be a serious threat for top four in the new year. I really am interested and intrigued as to how this is um, going to play out in terms of the impact the World Cup is going to have on everything to do with domestic football. Um, Som says, Barca versus United and us spanking them would be a nice hi there to Frankie. Yeah. Um, this year, Europa League is more interesting than Champions League. Not sure on that. I'm keeping an eye on Napoli in the Champions League. Yeah. TC says, Steve was the Leicester winning the league a fluke. A team can even fluke a league. I, I would be tempted to say that you can't fluke a league. You've been consistent over 38 games. There is no fluke in that. I would say the circumstances that came together for Leicester to win that league were quite fortunate, but I wouldn't have called it a fluke. They earned it. They deserved it. No one's ever won a league by accident. You've had, people have accidentally got themselves through in, in cup competitions, but no one's ever won a league by accident. I would say the circumstances fell into play perfectly for Leicester, and that's why they were able to win that league. Um, they had no Europa, European football. They had a full week to rest. They had a, a style of play that was, it wasn't necessarily unique, but it was extremely effective for them. A team that played 
quite contained, um, compact football, and then used the, the absolute Red Bull fueled carnage that Jamie Vardy could unload to hit teams on the break. Um, and teams weren't set up for it. And it was massively effective for them. And I, I wouldn't diminish them winning the league. The chances of it happening again are slim, but they, they deserve to win the title. Now, the, the thing is, you're not going to get title charges from people that are outside European football. It just doesn't happen. So that's why it might seem as a bit of a fluke. You know, teams that are equipped to win the league are teams that generally are already qualifying for the Champions League or at worst, they've been in the Europa League. But yeah, I would say there's no way Leicester uh, didn't deserve what they did. Jockey says, when's Paddock's next game and how's the dressing room manager? Next game is on Saturday and it is in the uh, Manchester Challenge Trophy. It's a bit like the Champions League because we, we play against teams in all different leagues, all different levels. Saturday, we've got a team from two leagues higher than us and it's the quarterfinal. If we win that, we're in a semifinal. Um, semifinal will be next month and then obviously we've got a little bit of time to wait before we get to the final. Final's going to be end of the year. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Lions, because it's well bright out there. Um, Bardi was crazy that season, says Hussey. Would I go for Patrick Schick? Yep. Um, who's my tip to win the World Cup? Not sure, to be honest. Not sure. We're going to be stuck that and looking at that in the next couple of weeks. How bright is that sun? Annoying. Um, we've got a poll going on if you want who you'd prefer, De Gea or Diego Costa. Um, let me know. Lachlan says, I'm from Australia. How hard is it to get to a game at Old Trafford? From Australia, it's a long walk, isn't it? <laughs> you're probably going to need a boat or a plane, I would imagine. Um... We're a paddock in the league now after last week's win. I think we're sixth in the league at the moment, but we have got four games in hand on everybody, basically. Um, I think if we win our games in hand, um, we will be second, a couple of points off the team that's in first, but we play the team that is in first in two weeks, next weekend. So we've got a cup quarterfinal this weekend, team that hasn't lost yet in first. We play them next weekend, uh, and then we have... I can't remember who the weekend after is, but yeah, we, we've got a month where we're playing some serious games. Last week, we had second in the league, beat them 5-2, 5-3. Uh, um, this week, we've got a quarter final from a t with a team a couple of leagues above us. Next week, we've got first in the league. Bring it on. I'm, uh, I'm enjoying seeing where we're having it uh, at the moment. Um, Hyde says, if Henderson keeps doing well at Nottingham Forest, starts on him one more season than one, think it's over for him at United, don't think it's going to happen. Som says, I see... Want to see Portugal and Argentina top their groups? You know where I'm going with this. <laughs> yes, interesting. Um, Daniel says, grateful for De Gea is a good keeper, but we need one for the future and one Ten Hag wants, Diogo Costa. I would largely agree with all of that, to be honest. Um, have I heard of FC Flora from Estonia? No. Should I have? Uh, Matthew says, get rid of De Gea, bring on Costa. How many seasons are we getting out of Ericsson and Casemiro? I would have thought three tops, probably. Um, Messi's thousandth game could be a World Cup final. That's interesting. Colin says, I love, I'd love you, Ava, to fuck the Champions League format off. Seeding's just a straight knockout. Um, anyone can play anyone. They're not going to maximise the amount of games that they get. Like, let's say you draw Bayern Munich and Real Madrid in the first round. One of them's gone. They want at least six games out of them teams. It's not going to happen as much as I probably tend to agree. I quite like the format that it is at the moment, but they're even expanding that. So I don't think we're going to necessarily get that sort of thing. <clears throat> so I sent you a website, a DM about the website. Hopefully I can get you guys on or something. Thank you. Cost the next big things. Big thing says Evelyn. I think so on that too. Um, What's my thoughts on Sesko's performances this season? I haven't seen enough of the, the more recent ones. I've been slammed this last four or five weeks and everything that I'm doing. I mean, those who aren't aware, I'm doing 10K a day at the moment and it's taking up a lot of my spare time. So, um, yeah, I'm not seeing as much as I would want to at the moment, but uh, we're nearly done. We've got two more weeks or so to go 
457 kilometers and walking for the lads that we lost in Afghanistan. So uh, check it out on my Instagram if you want to follow along with me on that one. But that's it from me today. I'm going to wrap it up there. Cheers for tuning in as always. Um, I'll be back tonight after the game with my thoughts on the result. Uh, and until then, I'll catch you in the next one. Laters. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.